Hi, I'm Stephanie from Cuddle Buggery, and today I want to talk about Velvet by Temple West. This book was a little bit bad, a little bit interesting, uh, a little bit good. It was definitely one of those things I call it interesting little creature. Velvet is like an Oreo cookie. Not the greatest cookie in the world, but edible, you know? And it um, has a weird aftertaste in your mouth. That's Velvet. The beginning is not great, the ending is not great, but the middle has something there. It really does. And I feel like you gotta wade through the bad in order to get to the good. Then you'll probably want another one because Oreos are always better with at least like five after the first. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. So basically, let me give you a quick rundown of what Velvet is. Like I said, paranormal romance with vampires. You've heard this story before. New girl moves into a new town and the boy who has never showed any interest in any girls suddenly has interest in this one girl. It's like Twilight, um, which is a little contrary to what some reviewers are saying. The only difference is, is that they hate each other at first. They hate, don't want anything to do with each other. Um, they actually don't even desire to really date at first, but unlike other YA novels where the universe is trying to keep two people apart, this book is like the universe is forcing them together in all of these weird circumstances. It's the total opposite. So they have to pretend they're dating. It's like, oh, the universe is like, you know, sitting back and saying, now you guys, kiss. <laughs> and pretty much that's what happens. She moves to in town and he immediately saves her life. It was his dad, turns out, his demon dad or whatever, who was, he's some evil guy. For whatever reason, he wants to impregnate the main character, her name is Caitlin, and Adrian, our vampire love interest, saves her from the attack on her. And because his council of vampire people, not the Volturi, I know what you're thinking, it's totally different from Twilight, obviously. They have said basically it is your job to watch over Caitlin, to make sure she's safe from your father, and he accepts this responsibility. They've come up with this plan to explain to everyone for the reason for them spending so much time together is that they're dating. Which sounds brilliant, right? You better not fall in love. <laughs> Except, obviously, they start developing feelings for each other. Now this is a trope that I usually don't get tired of because I think it's cute and I like the idea of people who don't necessarily liking each other kind of falling for each other inadvertently. It's adorable. What can I say? I'm a sucker. So, they are going throughout this dating phase and I think that's where it became more interesting for me is when they're um, together and they're having this banter and the characters themselves, there's nothing wrong with them. I think that they are a much better version of Twilight than Twilight. Um, the beginning is terrible though. I mean you have to wade through a lot of the cliche corniness because it is. And then some of it is just really weird, like sentences where Adrian literally says to Caitlyn, I almost killed you to keep you alive. That's super weird. And what? <laughs> to be fair, Caitlyn is like not into this guy. She's just like, oh, um, that's weird. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> Don't come near me because you're a weirdo. But he has to because someone has to keep her safe from his weird dad who wants to kill her and impregnate her and create vampire babies. Yeah. Why has gotten so weird? The good thing is Caitlyn has friends that are not Adrian and they talk about other things that are not about Adrian which is really great and sometimes hard to see in YA because you usually get the romance but you don't always get the friendships, and particularly female friendships. And that's one thing Velvet does do. It has positive female relationships between Caitlyn and her best friend, whose name I have forgot. Whatever. Her best friend is really, really concerned about her. Um, she looks out for her. She goes out of her way to make sure she's happy. She even gets to the point where she says to Caitlyn, she's like, look, um, if he's upsetting you in any way, that's my business to know. We're friends. I care about you. And I kind of really appreciated that. Um, one thing I did not like about Velvet was that, obviously, cliches. Um, but as much as I complain about them, I'm entertained by them. So I don't know if I should complain because 
I laughed a lot through Velvet. Like, sometimes my eye twitched a little bit, like, you know. But then other times, I was really into it. And it does have a very addictive quality. You know, it's that same addictive quality Twilight ended up having. So, not necessarily terrible. Um, the thing also that kind of pissed me off is the ending. It's like, I don't like books that, you know, keep feeding you this mystery. And you're hooked onto the mystery and you're really interested. You're like, what's going to happen? Is his father really going to kidnap her and impregnate her and have vampire babies that kill her? Like, what? What? Like, that's why I continued to read because I was like, well, you can't just drop that bomb and leave me hanging, right? So I get to the ending and it's virtually you learn nothing new about the major plot. That's the biggest issue with Velvet. The relationship with Adrian and Caitlin is so much in the forefront that it kind of forgets about the rest of the plot and the rest of the reason why the reader might be there. So much so, you get to the ending, you don't really find out anything new about the plot to propel you into the next book, and it's a little frustrating. I care about Adrian and, you know, Caitlin. I like them together as a couple. I ship it, but... I do also want to hear some about the plot. I wanted to know, you know, more about the mystery behind the council. It's like the book literally hits you over the head with so many mysteries and then gives you nothing by the end. I realize she has to have, she as in Temple West, has to have, you know, more for book two and book three, I'm guessing. But, give me something. And there was nothing she gave me by the end. And that's why we have a problem. I lied so hard at Velvet. My eye twitched and a tear dropped from my eye. And it was awesomely terrible. Can people get past the beginning? That is the hurdle of this novel. Do you have enough patience to stick with it for the first 40% of craptastic dialogue and cliches? Can you make it? I don't know. I mean, do you have as much patience as me? This is the reason why I said Velvet is like an Oreo cookie. The best part was in the middle. The two side pieces were disgusting and I could have done away with them, but really the middle would have made no sense without them. So I had to eat all of the cookie and now I just feel fat. Thanks for watching, me in my pajamas. Yeah.